today, I like to just charge us as we celebrate in the liberty of God's spirit that we reassess our attitude to love. Let's reassess how we express love, how we show love. Let's pay attention again to that subject of love. I'd like to read very quickly 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that was recited uh, by Jennifer. I would like to read just verse 8. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love never fails. Please help me, love never fails. I think it's time for the word, not for the wardrobe, okay? <laughs> Again, like, can we say together, love never fails? But whether there are prophecies, I, I want you to please recite with me. This is not projected. If you're not checking your Bible, can we recite it together? Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there's knowledge, it will vanish. We say to your neighbor again, reassess your attitude towards love. I have a story of a man who was a builder and he had to renovate a, a house and um, because he was not so experienced and he didn't have the structural design they were just knocking down blocks and they were also knocking down columns you know um, pillars what we call pillars and all of that now by the time they finished the renovation I was about to move into the house he called his friends and the invitation was out then all of a sudden uh, there was this agency that you know carried out a check and they realized that there was a lot of crack in the building and because of that the man was a politician was influential they were still going to allow them to open you know do the opening ceremony but because what had gone on the the, the building was unstable you know rich men don't like to die quickly okay <laughs> so all of a sudden everybody started giving excuses giving reasons why they didn't want to come why something could collapse like just like when you know uh, Samson held the two pillars and the sudden uh, fell in at the same time now when i heard that story something just occurred to me that the person was trying to make room great beauty great you know an ambience of success you know create something better but he forgot the fundamentals he forgot the foundation he forgot the basic things that put the, the building together and, and so sometimes what like that when we're creating room for more when we are running for more prosperity we forget that we're displacing the critical things of our lives. When we're trying to, you know, get more out of life, we'll forget the fact that there's a nature God has. There's, there's a source we draw from. And if we don't do it God's way, it's not going to increase. One of the scriptures that we must always remember is John 3, 16. God so loved the world. What does that mean? God wants the world to come back to him because it's a ministry of reconciliation. And when God wanted to conquer more, when God wanted to you know, get more souls, more hearts back to him, what did he do? He went back to the basic concept and you know, subject of love. He loved the world. He wants the world back. Then he gave his only begotten son. And I'm suggesting to someone here, anytime we are trying to create room, we should not displace what will keep the room open for God as long as love is in our heart we will always make sure the foundation of our Christianity is strong I will always make sure that the critical aspects of our life remain intact and so today I just want to remind someone in the house here that God does something for us God makes more room for our success and the way he does that is love as long as we love God God will always give to us for god uses love as a platform to give god loved the world he gave his only begotten son so love is the way that god creates more opportunities more you know favors this is the way god answers prayers many of us don't understand that's a critical thing so don't be like the builder while you are trying to make more money you forget love when you are trying to make new friends you forget the old ones when you are trying to rise you forget that as you are you know disconnecting and dissociating just like the man that was building you know re removing blocks removing columns as you are disconnecting and dissociating there's something you should realize you are limiting your rise if you have a story building and you begin to remove the columns and the pillars you know that you remain in bunker. So somebody agree with me in the house here. So while we are making new connections, 
we should not be disconnecting the old one because the more levels you have in a building, the higher the building will rise. Does somebody agree with me? So I'm suggesting to someone here that we understand that love is what is what keeps our success. You can start like a building, but if you keep, if you want to keep rising, if you want to keep adding columns, adding pillars, understand that the 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 thing that may God give you where you are is also the reason it will raise you higher above where you are. You need to be reminded that God is love. And I like to remind us, just one or two reminders. I read again John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Please say with me, whoever believes in him. You know what God is saying here? Even though he presents some of the concept of love, you should buy into it. If, 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 it just like we know today, not everyone believes in Christ. So not everyone enjoys his grace. If you don't buy into a concept, you cannot benefit from it. It's just like now, some people don't believe in going for vacation. <laughs> Even if the resources will come. When it comes, you are going to use it to buy land. You will not go on vacation because why? You don't believe in it. It's not in your frame of thought. For God so loved the world, He's going to give. He wants to give, but you have to believe. Believe in His concept of how and why He gives, which is the concept of love. So I'm saying to someone, and please be reminded that love is the foundation of everything God gives. What makes God bless us is love. So as long as you love God and you continue to show love to people, receiving from Him will not be a problem because giving is done on the platform of love. Then I also like to read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8 again. It says, Love never fails. Please help me, love never fails. And it tells us all the things that we fail. It says, Prophecies will fail, tongues will fail. Speaking in tongues, you know what God is saying here? Love, let me use a local palace, a senior brother to the gift of prophecy. If you see a prophet who can discern, who can tell you your future, all of that is still small boy when it comes to compared to love. He says, prophecies, they don't last as long as love will last. Speaking in tongues has expiry dates. Love has to expiry dates. Since tongues will fail. Listen to me. If thought fails, love is what will make it continue. Let me bring it home to us. When there was a pandemic and we could not meet, the only reason we were connected is because we love one another. Those who were benevolent, you tell you, were buying bags of rice, were inviting people, and just helping people, even though church, it wasn't as if Hopkins was coming in. Church failed. Thoughts was were suspended because we were not coming together, but love. Being a foundation of our covenant with God continued outside the four walls of the church. Is someone feeling God in the house here? I'm suggesting to you here, love remains a foundation, remains unchangeable even when everything else changes. Your job may change, but if you love the vision of the house, even if you change location, you will still be contributing to the vision. Am I making sense here? Please say to someone beside you, don't let love fail with you. Don't let love fail with you. Don't let love fail with you. Now read verse 3 of that 1 Corinthians 13. It says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. You know what I'm saying here? Love should be the motive for all our actions. He says, even if I give everything I have, listen to this. If the motive is not love, God will not bless it. That's what he's saying. There will be no profit. Why? It's God that blesses. So you are giving, you know, you can give someone because the person is irritating you. There's a story like that in Luke chapter 18. A friend came to another friend. He was knocking at night. He was in death street. He was under pressure. He said, a friend of mine has come. I don't have what to, to feed. His friend reacted and said, wait, wait. When he was persistent, because of his persistence and trouble, he opened the door and gave him bread. That, he didn't give him bread because he wanted to. He gave him because it was an irritation. Am I making sense? God is saying here, even when you give to the poor, people praise you. But if you don't have love, God will not bless it. 
my prayer is that our seed will not be wasted in the name of Jesus Christ. And please hear this. First John 4, 16 says there, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And he will abide in love, abide in God. Hear this? And God in him. Please say with me, God in him. Say with me, God in him. Say again, say God in him. You know what he's saying here? Love is the summary of God. Love is what will help us know whether God is in you or not. Hello, somebody here. Let's bring it home. You have money. Your brother is suffering. If you say you have the Holy Spirit, you give. You say what is wrong with the house of God. You see somebody who is suffering needs prayer. You are praying 10 hours for yourself. It is the same Holy Spirit you are using to pray. You cannot spend 10 minutes for your friend to pray. And you all have to shout hallelujah together. No, it, it says there's something wrong. I think I should read that first John 4 16 again. You know, uh, uh, let me have Kevin read that, recited that to us. So let me read it to you again. It says, And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. And He will abide in love, abide in God, and God in Him. Which means that if anything we do, if God does not receive what represents Him in you, He will leave. He will abide in love, abide in God, that God abides in Him. If God does not say love somewhere, He will go. Why? Ask yourself if they put you inside the ocean, will you stay there? It's not your natural environment. Where there's no love, God does not stay. I'm suggesting here, any home marriage where there's no love, they will scatter. Why? It's God that brought you together. What God has joined together. Once love is not there, God cannot stay there. Hello, somebody here. So let's understand that God is love. And you see, this beautiful son, all we are doing today is to celebrate a renewal of love. Please say to someone beside you, I celebrate the love of God in your life. And you know what? When we do this properly today, I want us to just enjoy this. This is an additional service. We're not, you know, stay long. You know, when we do this, the blessings of God begin to flow. I'd like to read to you here as I close this. Uh, from Revelation chapter 2, I read verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 2. The Bible says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Please say me first love. Please can you say a little louder, say first love. You know what that suggests? You know what that suggests? Some people cannot keep relationships forever. Some people's relationships don't last. So God is saying here, you are going to love somebody else. <laughs> but then how can you have a first love and you disconnect? And why is this important? Because God is love and God is forever. When there's love, relationships are sustained. Do you understand that? So God in his word is reminding us as we renew love today, let's make it permanent. Don't forget your love for God and don't forget your love for your fellow brothers and sisters. And it says in verse 5, as a round of, it says, Remember therefore from where you are falling. Let me ask anybody, have you fallen out of love? <laughs> you see why I said you should sit beside your spouse. Ask your spouse if you are right. Have you fallen out of love? <laughs> Amen. You know, we fall in love. But we should not fall out of love. So God is saying, if you ever fall in love, don't fall out of love. He is indicting that you are falling out. I read that again, verse 5 of Revelation chapter 2. Remember, therefore, from where you are falling, repent and do the first works. Please help me the first works. You know, you can't have love without working it out. Giving is part of working out love. And that's why today we're doing a lot of that. We're, we're not just talking, we're not just eating. We're not just playing, we're also giving. Part of the things we also have is there will be some things that some people will take free of charge. Praise the Lord. We should check the price tag, whether it's free or not, before the security arrests you, okay? <laughs> Praise the Lord. He says, repent and do the first works. He's talking about love and he's talking about works. Or else, hear this, or else, I will come to you quickly and remove your long stand from his place unless you repent. My prayer is that whatever is working for you will not stop working in the name of Jesus Christ. As the Lord renews his love in our hearts and our love for him and for ourselves, my prayer is that whatever blessing you have missed, God will replenish it in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Were you blessed in the house this morning? Can we celebrate the love of God together? Say, Lord, thank you for renewing love in our heart. Thank you for purity. And thank you for the flood of power.